prototype four-mirror lens, the Zeiss lens, no longer produced. This clip will be about the Hunter lens, the Volk G lens, Sussman lenses, and similar lenses. In the four-mirror lenses, all four mirrors point towards the iridocoal angle. There are no mirrors that are designed to have the peripheral retina. These lenses have a small area of contact. You can see cornea around the lens when it's been used, and they have a relatively flat area of contact. The advantage of this lens is that it does not require methyl cellulose as a coupling solution, so that it is very fast to do goniopathy once one becomes skilled. Also, there is no methyl cellulose to grade subsequent perimetry or photography. I believe that this is the best lens for routine use. It is the most difficult lens to master, but it is worth learning to master this lens. Additionally, this lens can be used for dentation goniosity, a very valuable tool that is discussed in the second on techniques for difficult angles. This lens is held between the thumb and index finger. The remaining finger used to brace the hand against the patient's cheek. This will steady the hand and allow the examiner to keep up with any small movements. The lens is held lightly, and this is one of the hardest aspects of this kind of a lens. When I perform gonioscopy with a form lens, there is constantly air being in and out underneath the lens, letting me know that I'm not pushing too hard. If I'm pushing too hard, I will officially open the angle, as in intation gonioscopy. Certainly, I should not see corneal folds during gonioscopy unless one is intentionally denting the eye. The lens is held square to the eye. This is the most comfortable position for the patient. If lens is held in a diamond-like configuration. The edges of the lens are uncomfortable against the paste lids. I always begin by looking in the superior mirror. This provides the inferior iridocorneal angle, which is the deep and the most pigmented part of the iridocorneal angle. The pigment helps find the angle structures and allows one to become oriented to this particular patient's anatomy. The upper and lower mirror is also the easiest to use to identify the corneal edge, which is discussed in the section Difficult Angles. One could then look in each of the mirrors in turn, noting any abnormalities and recording them. Remember the view is a mirror image. There are some portions of the angle that are missed by holding the lens salt and looking in only the four mirrors. One can see these other small portions of the angle simply by rotating them a few degrees and reading in the four mirrors. Tall clinicians might find the handle of the Zeiss or Busser lens to be awkward. The Sussman lens might be a good alternative because it does not have a handle. The Sussman lens is an excellent lens, but I find that the long arrow makes it difficult for me to offset the light source from my oculars. For tall clinicians, it is a wonderful lens.